There is no better notion hack than having your databases and views on the back end page. What does that even mean? What does it even mean to have a supreme second brain to meet you? Why did you name a template like that? And why are you showing everyone how to do it? And why is it that when they get the supreme second brain, they also get your course mastering notion? Why is that Dimitri? Because I wanted to be nice. I don't know. What do you want? Stop breaking the fourth wall and being rude to yourself. Let's hop right back into the series on how to build the supreme second brain from scratch. So as we left off in the last one, we built out just the base navigation of everything. And what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna go into here, into the databases page. Now, this page, you can make this full width really quick. And uh, as you'll notice, hmm, we talked about it last time. We wanna have this synced navigation in some places. So what I would recommend you do is snag this, copy and sync, paste it in there, click the home page, copy and sync, and then do the same for that. Now you can just snag this, make this full width, paste this in here. Once again, go to the home page, copy and sync again, go into views, and then boom, you're able to navigate within uh, everything that's created in the workspace so far. So you have the databases page and the views page. I personally wanna go into the views page first because I feel like I don't question the order I'm going in my videos in. No, but actually the reason is because I want to have all these hyperlinks into pages that make sense. So when we look at the views section, what I like doing is adding a little call out block here, making it default background. It just kind of sections things off for us. And then we can make a page icon and let's call this core pages bold it. Now we can do then do a slash divider, put this in here, press enter, and then let's make some pages. Huh? Yeah. So slash page, let's do projects. Now this is a key component here. What we're going to do is we're going to do the first one. We're going to name it the right thing. But then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do full width here. And what we can do to make a lot of pages really quick is go back one page, copy this, and we're gonna go into the projects and then paste this obviously right here. Now, what's so special about what I just did there? Well, the fact of the matter is if I go back one page again, I can then duplicate this page multiple times. So if I do this, I'm telling you right now, you're gonna need 10 of these. So you can just right click and duplicate nine times, or you can right click on this, and then press control D nine times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, since I already did it once. And the reason for that is now all of these have this sync header here. So we're gonna be able to just not have to manually add that every time. And then just follow along and do the same thing as above. So we're gonna just go in the same order. So we could copy the names like this and do it quick. Just copy paste and then go layers. Now you may not want it bolded or uh, I mean caps like that. So you just do areas, but this is essentially how mine wine works. I'm just going to go this direction again. So resources, and then we're going to go archive, review, meetings and notes, goals, contacts. We're going to add a couple more here, do tags, and then inbox. And we're going to add these emojis. So page, once you're done with these emojis, you'll be able to get to the actual fun part. So it's going to be a tag tag, then an inbox. All right. Now we're just going to right click on this, highlight these, paste it in. So right click on this, highlight it, click link, and then continue through this entire process through all of them. Now, if you want to be fancy with it, you could right click and click on the text, control A, control K, paste it in. Very monotonous thing that I'm showing you how to do, but it will be worth it when we are done because it will be a very pretty navigation through the entire system here. And there are a few extra ones here. I will note there are a few extra ones, the tags in the inbox, and we'll get to those in a bit, but that's just something for later. Now, if we go into any of these pages, we're gonna have this, we're gonna be able to go to the home page again. We now can navigate between these multiple pages here. It's a beaut. It's an honest to goodness to God beaut that you're able to navigate between all these different things. And you might be asking yourself, what is the reason? Why are we doing this? The reason is, especially for the database end, if I go to the databases page, we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna do slash call out again, default background data, and do core databases. And it's because if you end up working in one of these, what's gonna happen is if you if you just work with the database in line, you're gonna accidentally duplicate or delete something. We've all done it. I'm a Notion expert and I do it. So that's why I'd stop doing it and just have these backend databases. So we're gonna do the same system, right? Except we're gonna do slash page, then we're gonna do table and then new database. What does this do? This makes it so that we're going to have a new database and the icon's going to be right here. And we're going to call this projects. Now, what I really do recommend you do is that you do it like this and then you right click, you rename it and have DB and then call it second brain. And this tells you that it's the core 
sort of databases that exist within the second brain system. That's why I have it labeled like that. So you don't, if you do a control P, you don't accidentally have like projects. Oh, which one is it? And I know it shows slash database right here. So it could distinguish where it is. However, you never know. I think this is a better way to do it. And trust me, when you're relating different databases that have similar names, you're going to want it. So then what you're going to do is you're going to duplicate this nine times because you're going to have 10 again. So I'm going to do two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to count to 10. And the reason, once again, is that we just want to make sure that we have them all create databases. And I will say, if you duplicate quickly like that, it does kind of bug out sometimes. So I'm going to refresh the page. And you'll see, since I was duplicating something that was duplicated, it didn't actually duplicate. So I can highlight is this. If you highlight stuff that's already duplicated and isn't loading, it'll work better. So let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Let's get 10. All right, now we're gonna rename these accordingly to areas. Then we're gonna do just the same sort of thing. And the nice thing is all these emojis should be uh, showcasing in the recent section. So you can keep just doing this. So this is gonna be resources. I recommend deleting the end, highlighting the front and typing the name just like this one. Tags, a little target, task, checkbox. And then we're gonna have a few more here, which is gonna be results, which funny enough is not gonna have the second brain appendage. You'll see why later. And then the rest of them will. So we're gonna do contacts. So you can see the rest of them have a page associated to it. That's why they kind of need the extra appendage of second brain at the end. Meetings and notes. And lastly, we are going to do journal. And then we are going to fix these icons let's do this for a journal okay now we're gonna have the the baseline of this done to start and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do another slash call out block here so slash call out and let's just make this easy so default background we're gonna do database or sorry areas databases we can actually so if we go here we can do slash divider again and you'll see we're actually gonna do a slash database and we're gonna fix this actually too so layer we're gonna call this areas database now the reason for this is we're actually gonna have a similar setup to the Notion app system where you'll see it right here actually. You're gonna have the ability to view areas and resource databases in the workspace. You're gonna be able to pin them and, and work with them very easily. So for example, here there would be specific area databases or resource databases for that specific area. And then you can actually put them in the archive here as well. So you're gonna be able to use it in a very similar way. So I figured I might as well make this area's database in the back end. What you can do is go to a table here. You can get rid of show database title. And if you want, you can still add a uh, layer here to show area database. But what you're gonna do is I would edit this property. I'm gonna change it to a relation. And we're gonna connect it to areas db second brain. Now I have a million of these because I'm the one who made the template. So what I have to do, and this is just a pro tip in any sense, I'm gonna just double check what it is by going into it, just putting a little XX here. So I know the difference. So I'm gonna do relation again, and we're gonna find the one with the XX. We're gonna call it areas. We're gonna just call this databases on the other end. And to make it look similar, we can actually change the icon here. And I changed that to areas. And then we're gonna make a universal status property. So we're gonna go here, and this status property is gonna be called status. And the reason I'm not using the actual status one and I'm using a select property because the status property in Notion does not really work with the API yet in a lot of ways that the select property does. So I'm gonna call this review, add some other ones, pinned, active, and archive. And hopefully those are self-explainable. I am actually gonna make a little mini course on like what all the terminology means, but this is just purely showing you how to build it. Long story short, it just kind of indicates uh, like what the status of the item is, whether like it's something that you need to review, whether it's something that's gonna show up on the home page isn't pinned, active will show up on the areas page, archive will show up on the archived page. It just kind of cleans up your space a bit. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to go right here and do another relation property. We're gonna do it to the tags database. Now I have to do the exact same thing I did earlier, which would be go back to this page or sorry, to this right here and rename it. I have a little XX and then once again, do a relation, Let's do tags. Now I'm gonna do databases. I'm gonna just do tags, press add relation. Once again, add a tag so it makes more sense. So now we have this database all figured out. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna make this database very similar to another one which is gonna be resources. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna duplicate this for the ease of it. 
Uh, I'm gonna rename this to resources and change the page. So resources databases. And the reason for this is we wanna make sure that we have both of these covered. And all I'm gonna do actually from this sense is I'm gonna delete this and then I'm gonna copy the link here from the resource database, drag a block right in here, then go in here and paste and then press create length view of database, click on table, and then I'm going to hide this. And what I would recommend you do is basically just follow the same program for the most part. And we're gonna get into more of like the resources side of it and like some of the more advanced stuff. But just to get started, we're gonna make the same properties and then we're gonna get more into the other stuff later. So for example, we're gonna change this to layers. We're gonna do areas, make sure it's a relation. And we're gonna do it to the areas db second brain xx because that's the one that i have to do so we're going to change this to resources and then we have to do layer again we're just going to copy the select setup we had before change the name to status and go in here and do a review pinned active and archived then i would recommend you go up here and like figure out the colors just do the same thing twice you don't want to goof that up do we I'm colorblind, but I know people care about that. So pretty sure I made it easy on myself by doing red, green, blue, gray. All right. So that's going to be almost all of it. We're going to then do the same relation and then go to the tags, name this tags, name this resources and tag right here. Then we're going to make a select property that is going to be called type. Now, the reason for this is resources can either be databases or they can be like things like the, an article or a tool or a video or a podcast you've watched. So I'm going to just type database here and then you can kind of brainstorm different ones, but I'm going to type article, tool, video, podcast, totally up to your discretion. And then what I would recommend you do is you would take this since it's like your main navigation and I would copy the link like I did, copy and sync, and then do new area database, paste this in, make it full width, and then just type uh, slash database. It's an inline one, so new database. So this is sort of the way that you'd make a new resource database or a new area database. So I'm gonna click on this, change it, set to default. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing minus the, the last set to default thing there. So we do new area database, make sure the type is selected as database, page icon, paste that in there, then do slash database, and then new database. And then make sure if you go here to the top right, it is full width. Now you don't necessarily need to make this be the default as I mentioned earlier. And I would actually say new resource database. And I'd make the icon the database one. I'd make the icon the database one right here. And then I would make a new template. And for the page icon, I would do a new resource material and then just not select any of the types. I'm gonna drag this over to the left here. We have a couple more items we need to finish. So let's just do first the non-relation. So let's do files and media, pretty self-explanatory, right? Then we're gonna do another files and media one and we're gonna call it cover image. Now, the reason I like this is because you can make a cover image for a gallery view and you don't have to have the uh, top of the page get cluttered because I, I don't do that anymore. So you can change this icon to a photo if you want. Then I'm gonna add a URL for URL purposes for resources. And then I'm gonna do two more relations. So one is gonna to be to the projects one. So projects, and once again, I have to make sure that I do this right. So projects, and then the other one's gonna be contacts. So I just wanna make sure these are related. So projects, db, second brain, xx. Okay, so resources, and then we can just get rid of these appendages over here. Then we could do a wrench, and then you would guess it. I'm gonna have to do the same thing for this contacts one. Contacts, second brain, XX, and change it to resources, contacts, and then do the silhouette. Now this is the back end. You have the whole back end created outside of the specific properties here, and you're pretty much good to go. Now you can, I'm gonna obviously rename these and fix these appendages, but that's the majority of it. If you wanna learn how to do anything like this in Notion, I got a million Notion videos. If you wanna continue on with this, make sure you do that. And make sure you check out this video on how to improve your productivity even more.